Hello, Ian Jameson here again and uh, I'm glad that you can be with me to spend a moment or two in the scriptures again today. I'd like to ask you please to turn once again to the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms and this time Psalm 37 please, Psalm 37. And um, I hope that you're keeping safe and well, I hope that you and your loved ones are managing to keep your eyes fixed on the Lord Jesus during this difficult time. What have you missed most during lockdown? What have you missed most? What would be your answer to that question? Well, I think that, you know, for some people, there, there's perhaps a restaurant or a particular food chain that they just can't wait to be able to get out and enjoy again. Or perhaps there's a pastime that you've just been aching to participate in again and, and you just can't wait to uh, be able to get out there and, and do that. Or I think for most of us it will be loved ones, those who we miss, those uh, friends and family and those close to us who we just can't wait to be able to embrace again and to be with and to spend quality time with again. And one of the things that I think lockdown has been um, very useful for is that it has revealed a number of things in our hearts and one of those is our desires. What are our desires? We've been deprived humanly speaking, of a number of our normal desires and fulfilling them as we would normally do. What are our desires? And I think that uh, this psalm has so much to say about that. What do we delight in? What do we delight in? Or who do we delight in? This word delight is used three times in this psalm. Let's look very briefly at these three little references uh, to the word delight in this psalm. First of all, uh, very famous verse, verse 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Verse 11, and this will be familiar uh, to every Christian as they think about the Sermon on the Mount. But the meek, verse 11 says, but the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant peace and delight themselves in abundant peace. And then on to verse 23, on to verse 23. And this time, it's not so much speaking about the delight that we have, but the delight that God takes in us. Verse 23, the steps of a man are established by the Lord when he delights in his way, when he delights in his way. What do we delight in, brothers and sisters? Well, let's go back to that first verse, that famous verse, verse four, and think about it for a few moments together. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Friends, I think this poses three questions for us. And the first question is, what are my desires? The question that follows from that is, are those desires, desires that come from a heart which is delighted in the Lord? And then the third question is, how can we delight in the Lord? How do we delight ourselves in the Lord? Notice the structure of this verse. It has two parts. First of all, an exhortation. Delight yourself in the Lord. That's where we start. That's the command. Delight yourself in the Lord. And then there's a promise that flows from that. And he will give you the desires of your heart. There's two parts here. We must delight ourselves in the Lord. And conditional on that, we have this promise. And he will give you the desires of your heart. This verse is not a blank check is it for all the desires that you and I may have at any given time to be uh, given and granted by Almighty God. God is not there uh, to grant us our wishes but God changes our hearts and minds as we delight ourselves in him. We must delight ourselves in the Lord first of all and through that process of sanctification as we gaze upon the Lord, he gives us the desires of our hearts as the desires of our hearts begin to align with the desires of his heart for us. I'd like you to turn, please, to Isaiah chapter 42, because as we ask that third question, how do we then delight ourselves in the Lord? We have a supreme example, don't we? We have a supreme example in our wonderful saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who delighted in God. God the Father delighted in him and delights in him still today and always will. And the Son delights in the Father. Let's just turn to Isaiah chapter 42, one of the messianic servant chapters of Isaiah. And let's read these wonderful verses together. Isaiah 42 and verse 1. Behold my servant 
whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him, and he will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. And we could read on, but for the sake of time, we'll just stop there. My chosen, in whom my soul delights. God delights in the Son. The Son, the son whom he would send in the fullness of time he sent forth his son and here in Isaiah chapter 42 that sending forth is promised and prophesied and he would be one in whom the soul of God delights. We talked on Monday about the fact that to look at the, the walk of the Lord Jesus Christ here upon the earth was to see moral beauty, was to be a witness to glory and he was one who always lived and always acted in a way <clears throat> that would delight his father we bring pleasure to his father. Well, I'd like us to turn back to the Psalms at this point and just forward one or two Psalms to Psalm 40. Psalm 40. And here again, we have a prophetic section uh, which is used in Hebrews chapter 10 to speak about the Lord Jesus and what he said of himself. And in Psalm chapter 40, we have this wonderful expression of the Lord delighting in his God. Let's read verse 6 because verse 6, first of all, provides a contrast. What does not bring delight to the heart of God? Verse 6. In sacrifice and offering you have not delighted, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. And then listen to verses 7 and 8. Then I said, Behold, I have come in the scroll of the book it is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. Friends, what an example. What an example of our wonderful Saviour, the Lord Jesus. In his life here upon the earth, he always delighted to do that which would bring pleasure to the Father. I delight to do your will, O my God. And just think of the extent of that, friends. Think of the extent of it. Yes, he went out into ministry. Uh, later on in his life, at the age of 30, entered into that public ministry for that period of three years and he brought pleasure. Uh, he'd always brought pleasure to his father and he brought pleasure now in public ministry, in miracles and in healings and in public teaching, in the private instruction of his disciples. And yet this would come to its grandest fulfilment, wouldn't it? Outside the city walls of Jerusalem on the cross of Calvary. As the nails were being hammered in as the crown of thorns was placed upon his head and the robe of purple as he was spit upon it would be true of him that at that very moment he delighted he delighted to do the will of his father in heaven i delight to do your will oh my god your law is within my heart he had set his face as a flint to go to jerusalem knowing all that would face him there knowing the shame and humiliation knowing the spitting and the scourging that he would have to pass through. And yet he would say, Behold, I have come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me, I delight to do your will, to do your will whatever it costs, to do your will wherever it demands that I should go. Your law is within my heart. Well, brothers and sisters, what a supreme example we have of our Saviour who was delighted in God. He delights in God still today at his Father's right hand and God's delight is still found in him. What a wonderful Godhead. What a wonderful Trinity we worship. It's a serious issue, brothers and sisters, a serious issue. Where are our desires? What do we delight in? I'd like to ask you to turn to the book of Malachi, please, the final uh, book of our Old Testament, that minor prophet, uh, post-exilic prophet, and uh, the book of Malachi, please, and to the second chapter the second chapter and here there's a warning issued a warning issued to Israel uh, through uh, the prophet Malachi by God himself and he says this in verse 17 of chapter 2 you have wearied the Lord with your words but you say how have we wearied him and here's the answer by saying everyone who does evil is good in the sight of the Lord and he delights in them or by asking where is the God of justice 
people of Israel were in a godless state. They were in a very low spiritual ebb. And they had come to believe that they were delighting in God and that God delighted in them and yet God was really the God of their imagination. It wasn't the God of holiness, the God of righteousness, the God of their fathers, of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And as verse 3 opens, we find this prophetic warning. Behold, I send my messenger and he will prepare the way before me. That refers to John the Baptist. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? Brothers and sisters, what our soul delights in is so important. Where do we find delight? Where are our desires? If our desires are here upon the earth, if our desires are for those which, things which are created only, then we're not ready. We're not ready for that day when this one in whom God's soul delights will come. Do we delight in God? Do we delight in God? If we delight in him, then the cry of our hearts would be Maranatha. We hope that he is coming soon. We hope that the Lord is coming to take us to be with himself very soon. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. Let me finish by going back to Psalm 37 and reading that verse just one more time. Verse 4 says this. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen.